Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Now, today I wanted to share with you my current equipment setup that I use for vlogging both outside and also inside the car. Uh, we'll go through the cameras, uh, the equipment, uh, editing software, and I'll be able to give you some tips and tricks uh, and give you my recommendations based on what I have learned so far. So stick around and let's get into the video. Now, before we get started, just wanted to do a quick introduction. My name is Locke, short for Locky, and I mainly create videos on my 2012 Subaru WRX. I also am getting into a little bit of lifestyle things and lifestyle vlogs and all that, so stick around, and if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. It does mean the world to me. Please like the video if it was helpful for you and give me a comment down below what camera equipment you like to use for vlogging and in the car. I'd be interested to know. All right, so everybody needs a main camera in their arsenal and the main camera that I've upgraded to probably for the last year has been the Panasonic Lumix G9. Now, I have upgraded from this Panasonic Lumix G7, but there are several reasons as to why this camera is obviously better than the G7. Obviously, the Lumix G9 is much larger than the G7, and that is for several reasons. I have upgraded from the Rode VideoMic Go to the Rode VideoMic Pro. This one was just absolutely trash. This is way better, runs off its own battery. It's just smoother and overall way better quality, which is what you want. So even though the G9 is a lot heavier and a bit bulkier, it does improve on its quality much more than the G7. I got a nice new lens, uh, which is a lot more compatible with the vlogging style technique. This is a 12 to 60 millimeter lens with an f2.8 to 4.0 f-stop. This just provides like a lot crisper, clearer, and just better video quality overall. Another reason why I chose this camera as well is because of this pop-out screen. Now the G7 also has this pop-out screen, so it's something that I really wanted to keep when I was upgrading cameras. And of course you can turn it around, you can flip it upside down, so obviously when you're vlogging like this, you can see in the screen right here, what I'm looking at right now, I'm looking at my face right now, and you can kind of line everything up, and now I'm looking at you guys through the lens, so it's kind of easy to switch back and forth to see, you know, how the scenery is going behind you, um, and if you're in focus and all of that. Now when you're vlogging, you want the picture quality to be as smooth as possible. You want to be able to walk around and vlog without there to be too much disturbance. You don't want there to be many jitters in the camera when you're walking around, because uh, that just upsets your viewers and they do not like seeing a jittery camera angle. And this camera has what is called five axis image stabilization. So I can walk around the house uh, and I can have a pretty clean, stable image that follows me around, has autofocus, uh, and doesn't really upset you as a viewer. Um, and of course you can, you know, edit that out even further if you chose to, but because it's in the camera, it just makes it so much easier. Um, and just the picture, it just looks so much cleaner. Uh, and I'm sure everyone as a viewer would appreciate that. And last but not least, uh, the G9 has the capability to do 4K at 60 frames per second which is excellent. Um, you can obviously downsize this image to 1080p, downscale it on YouTube, um, and that works well for a nice crisp and clear image. Um, I obviously don't really have the uh, capacity to do that on my computer. I need to upgrade things first, but it's there in the future, um, and obviously it does the 1080p at 60 frames or 50 frames per second, depending on the region you're in, um, a lot clearer as well. So that is one of the bonuses. So there aren't too many accessories that I actually use with the G9 camera. Um, however, I do use mainly tripods. Uh, besides my main big tripod that I used to set up uh, and do a lot of still shots, I also have a couple of other tripods. Uh, the first one being just a mini tripod from Manfrotto. Um, it's pretty decent. It's got a ball joint on the top, so obviously you can move that around. Um, and it's great to set up in uh, places where you don't need the height. The second one is the Joby Gorillapod. Um, now the Gorillapod is pretty cool because you can uh, bend the legs in kind of whatever configuration you want it to be. So you can wrap it around a pole if you want to. Uh, the only problem is this is getting a bit old and these little cups like to kind of break off. So it's a bit sketchy trying to set it up now. Uh, and the third thing is also a suction cup mount. 
that also has a ball joint down there as well so I can mount it to the windscreen and I will show you what I do with that a little later on. So yeah, that's pretty much everything that I use the G9 for. It is my main vlogging camera. Uh, I use it both in and out the car and I will show you the setup in the car as well but I will get around to my second camera that I always use all the time. So let's show you that. All right, my secondary camera that I use all the time is a GoPro. It is the Hero 8 Black Edition, so it doesn't unfortunately have the LED screen on the front. Uh, it only has it on the rear, but it does have the Hyper Smoothing V2, which is excellent. Um, and honestly, you cannot compete with GoPro's Hyper Smoothing and Stabilization at the moment. Um, it's just unreal, out of this world. And also, you know, for such a little device, you get such great quality out of the video as well. So that's why I did want to talk about the GoPro. Now, when you're vlogging in the car, of course, a massive important thing uh, is the sound quality. And the GoPro doesn't really have the greatest sound. It has improved over the years uh, and you can do various things to improve that. But I wanted to show you the main thing that I have recently bought for the GoPro Hero 8, and that is the Media Mod. So as you can see, it is a little shroud uh, that goes around the GoPro. Uh, and the most important thing is, even though there is an ex another external microphone here, it's still pretty trash. Um, the most important thing here on this is we have a three and a half millimeter jack, so we can plug in an external microphone, and we've got a cold shoe on the top, and a cold shoe on the side there. So let me show you what I use to vlog inside the car. I'll give you a couple of scenarios in what I have been using before I got the GoPro and now that I have the GoPro uh, and I'll show you some comparison footage as well. So here is the Lumix G9 mounted on the dash here. As you can see, I've also got my external microphone sitting beside there, but also plugged in. That's why this little microfiber towel is here to stop any rattles. Uh, I've also got like a little sponge under here just to kind of keep it suppressed uh, for any little vibrations that occur when I'm on the road. Uh, obviously, I have a, um, a car with coilovers on, so it's not the greatest um, ride uh, quality. So uh, that sponge does help a lot as well with the image stabilization on the camera. And you can see me right here. Hello. All right, setting off with the G9 as the vlogging camera in the car. I've got the external microphone connected. We've got a bit of glare because it is the afternoon sun. So let me just get around this corner here. Because we have that image stabilization that's built into the camera, uh, it does do pretty well even on uh, some bumpy roads and you know with the uh, coilovers that I have in the car, the ride quality is still pretty decent. I'm um, going around a roundabout right now. And I'll just pull into the parking lot so then we can switch over to the GoPro. Way more user friendly. And it also stops you from having to mess around with, um, with connecting this massive camera up on the dash. The GoPro Hero 8 black uh, you're able to get a media mod which allows you to connect an external microphone just like what I've done here with the Rode mic and also I have put a nice suction cup mount there as well so not only are we super sturdy um, but the GoPro's got that hyper smoothing we've got the extra input for the sound so we're gonna get some really nice quality sound all right so now in the GoPro with the shotgun mic and the only thing that the GoPro doesn't have that the G9 does have is that screen, that pop-out screen so you can kind of position yourself and see where you're at and the angles and the lighting and all that kind of stuff. However, if you do have the newer models of the GoPros, I think the 9 and both the 10 are out now. They both have a little LED screen on the front, uh, which is excellent for that. And you know, you basically, got the full setup then of course if you do have the media mod as well you can buy an external led screen but you know i i don't see the point to it the gopro has got such a wide angle you know as long as you can see the camera lens it can see you basically so it's pretty easy to set up without that um so i don't 
I don't recommend having to get the, uh, the LED screen, but of course, if you have a newer model, then why not? So yeah, that is the comparison between the two. Alrighty guys, so there you have it. That is a comparison between what I have for my current vlogging setup and in the car. So hopefully that gives you, you know, a bit of an idea. Um, you know, it helps you with your car vlogging or your vlogging experience. Uh, it gives you some tips and tricks there. Um, if you have been following along with the videos, you'll know that in the previous video, I talked about my CV being um, pretty much pooped itself. Um, so what I did is I jacked the car up, I took the wheel off to see if I could see any visible damage, but the strangest thing happened. I couldn't see any visible damage. Um, and even though uh, technically you don't have to see damage for them to be, you know, be pretty much dead on the inside, um, I put the car back down and I went to the gym and now I'm not getting any sort of noise whatsoever. It's super weird that the clicks have gone, basically, from the CV. I don't get anything when I'm turning anymore. So I'm wondering if, by jacking up the car, I've sort of released the pressure on the CV joint and it somehow clicked back into place. I'm not really sure how it works, but at the moment, we're not replacing the CV. So um, I'm not gonna buy anything just yet. I'm hoping it kind of happens again, but also hoping it doesn't. Um, so yeah, we're just kind of going to play it by ear. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, if you're new to the channel, remember, subscribe. It does help me out. We're nearly at 1,300 subscribers. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Ready to race to you. This is